All right. So in the same chapter, and this is actually from verse six, Pentecostals use Acts 19 as a proof text to say we need to speak in tongues to be saved. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I, I think that we answered that already in the last question, so I'll just repeat a, a brief part of it, my answer, in, in that uh, uh, the reason that they spoke in tongues was for the, the, the observers so that they would recognize that something happened. Uh, if nothing happened, uh, you know, uh, that they could observe, then there would be no, they wouldn't really have any idea if they, hey, what's, it, nothing happened. <laughs> but then the same thing happened with, uh, uh, on Pentecost, uh, it was uh, uh, this uh, speaking in tongues, and, and not only the people who received the Holy Spirit, but if anybody saw that, they would have seen something different something strange but and different and and probably they would associate it with and this is miraculous uh, the same thing happened with cornelius uh when when peter preached to cornelius and his family and and um, peter gave the account to james in the jerusalem church about what had happened there he says well look they that's the that's the sign they got the same sign that we got after they believed on the lord jesus uh, so these things were uh, well, as a sign to show, okay, that these people actually believe. But uh, there was a time when those things were uh, not only um, common, but necessary. It served that purpose uh, for that time in history to let people see, hey, we can see that something's going on here. Uh, whereas now we walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, there, there's something that God uh, really treasures about us believing without seeing. Um, that's why when I when we think of uh, oh, um, Thomas, you know, uh, Jesus said, okay, Thomas, now that you've seen me, you believe, but blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe. Uh, so th there's something special about trusting Jesus without having to be able to see him and touch him. Uh, and the same thing with, um, I think that with Thomas and also with Paul on the road to Damascus, what they did, they did not really have faith. Now, before you react, uh, faith is uh, uh, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But Thomas and Paul saw Jesus. So it was no longer faith because he came, he actually presented himself to them. Faith was not needed because he showed himself to, to them. Uh, but, but you and I, everybody listening now, since we didn't get to see and touch Jesus, but we believe and trust him anyway, that God really values that. I don't I remember what the question was, but that's <laughs> okay, Renee. Yeah. Uh, well, there's one verse that destroys that. Uh, that not all people have the gift of tongues. Uh, to, to make a blanket statement like that and try to apply it to every believer for all time is just wrong. And in, the, in Mark, when it says, uh, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues or new languages. Well, that was fulfilled on Pentecost. That was a sign to the Jews that the Savior had come and that the, the Messiah's people were the ones that were speaking in new tongues and casting out devils. That was the sign to them that he was the savior. Okay. So Paul makes it clear when they're talking about gifts in the church, that not everyone has the gift of tongues. Cause he says this in a hypothetical, do all speak with tongues? There's many gifts and many parts of the body and they all don't have the same gifts. So here now, whether you believe tongues are still here or or if you just believe tongues just means languages, uh, they spoke in other languages, just like when Peter spoke, everybody heard their own language. Uh, it wasn't gibberish. However, there is one verse that does seem to say that no man understands him when you speak in tongues to the Lord is you speak in mysteries that because no human can understand. So if that's a possibility, if there are people that pray in some unknown prayer language, I'm not here to judge them, okay? So I'm not here to say whether it's it's still happening or it's not, or 
Uh, none of it. I don't think a lot of what's going on in these charismatic churches is tongues because it's confusion and it's exactly what Paul was against. So uh, I will show you the verse here that not every person speaks with tongues. This verse does not mean that everyone that believes is going to speak in and have the gift of other languages. It's saying that, hey, you're going to recognize when Christ is here, when the Savior is here, because these signs are going to follow my believers. So you're going to know that he's legit, okay, by these signs. Uh, it wasn't for all time, all right? Uh, it was a, it says, even says the Jews seeketh after a sign. So, uh, and it also says that the promises were given to the fathers and all that. So it's, it was definitely for the nation of Israel to confirm uh, the Messiah. Now, Paul speaks in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations. That means many different ones. But is the same God which worketh in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So he's saying all these different gifts, they all come from the same Spirit. There's not like different spirits given these gifts. He's clarifying it all comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. However, the, all the gifts are not going to be the same. He'll give one this gift, another that gift. Uh, for to one, another faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. That's many languages. To another, the interpretation of tongues. That's interpreting the other languages. But all these work at that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and has many members, all the bo bo members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Now here it says clearly. It's, you know, the eye can't say to the hand, I have no need of thee. And it says right here in 1 Corinthians 12, 30. Let me go down to the King James Version. Hold on. So he keeps on and on about it and literally asks, do all, do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? And the answer is no, they don't. Not everybody's given the same gifts. He just said right there, we're one body, but you might have this gift and this guy might have this gift, but we all work together and it's all one spirit. There shouldn't be division. You shouldn't be saying I'm better than him. I'm better than you. It's all coming from the same spirit. Nobody's better than anyone and all are necessary and a diversity of gifts are necessary. So the hypothetical here is, uh, the rhetorical question is, do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? No, they don't. Some have gifts of healing. So to say that you've got to have this specific spiritual gift to prove you're saved is ridiculous because Paul right here is clear that not everyone has that gift. They might have the gift of laying on of hands and healing people. They might have the gift of prayer or great faith or great understanding or evangelism or teaching or some other gifts. But not everyone has the same. Do all? Let's see what he says. Do all have gifts of healing? Question mark. Do all speak in tongues? Question mark. Do all interpret? If you continue, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Because here's the question: Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Question mark. No. God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healing, helps, government, diversities of tongues. And then he asks, hey, do all do this? Do all have this position? Do all have that gift? Of course not. That's his point. So it's just wrong to say you have to speak in tongues. You have to have this one gift. Uh, and by the way, everyone that speaks in tongues, I've never heard one of them actually use it biblically where they're speaking like arabic and they've never heard arabic although i have heard some of the missionaries 
have that gift on the spot when they're preaching uh, the gospel. I've heard them miraculously be able to speak Chinese or speak Arabic. They don't know what they're saying, but they just say it and the spirit comes through. I've heard of that happening. I really have. Uh, but our missionaries, they learn the language before they go there. Um, but I, I don't doubt that that can happen. But to say everybody has to do it to prove they're saved, that's just not biblical. It's not biblical at all. Okay, Jordan, what do you have to say about this? I, I'm going to have to, like, get a standing desk because, like, every time you guys talk, it just, like, stirs me, especially that answer with Renee. Because as you guys will come to see and as um, Luke and Renee already know, like, the specialty of the calling in my ministry is to refute the five major um, cultic religions that were born in the 1800s. There was just a evil spirit that was around there. That's where you got your Jehovah Mo uh, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, but even your charismatic sprung up there. And the proof text that I use is from 1 Corinthians 12. So the moment that Renee started going there, I was like, I was ready to jump up and down. But here's the thing. When it comes to these charismatic churches and other, just replace um, tongues with transubstantiation with the Roman Catholics or baptism with the Church of Christ, they all have their little niche. Um, Notice that at a charismatic church, when they are doing their altar calls, they're not doing altar calls to come receive Jesus. They're doing altar calls to come down and speak in tongues. It's such an emphasis placed on that. And what people don't understand, the dangers of speaking in tongues, forced tongues in that way, is there's actual videos out there where people are speaking in tongues. And like when it's reversed, they're actually like, cursing god out in a different language it's completely demonic um i'm not saying that all, so up until literally probably two or three weeks ago i just always was like there is no random language it's all languages that we can understand but somebody who led me to the gospel of grace who isn't a charismatic at all confided in me an experience that he had many years ago where he spoke in tongues and he never has given me reason to doubt. So it's something I'm going to have to dive more into because um, it's something I don't fully understand right now. But um, I have a couple of notes here that I usually go to when I'm talking to somebody with charismatic. And it's like Renee and Luke were saying that this was a sign. And it's only referenced three times in Acts. Um, the first time we know is at Pentecost. And I believe it was Renee that said that the Jews seek after a sign because you know, the verse says the Jews seek after a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom. So, and we see that all throughout the Old Testament. How many times did the Jews turn their back on God the moment they didn't see a sign? They were very um, loose with their faith. So at Pentecost, we see this um, speaking in tongues due to the Holy Spirit coming. Then in Acts 10, we see the Gentiles speaking in tongues to show the Jews like, oh, okay, so now Gentiles are being saved. Here, we're seeing these people speak in tongues. So the Jews realize Paul has um, the correct gospel message and the ability to um, fill people with the Holy Spirit. So that's something we have to realize is it was always a sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um so I, I, I don't have to go into my whole spiel with the first Corinthians because um, Renee did a beautiful job with that. But it's important to remember from verse 11 that the Holy Spirit distributes these gifts. And that's what they are. They are gifts. There's a difference between salvation and spiritual gifts. But he distributes them however he pleases. Um, but the one verse I do want to read um, so we know what the actual fruits are the things that we should be looking for for a born again believer is not tongues they're actually listed in galatians 5 22 and 23 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law and how ironic is it that those are all missing from your lordship salvation and making videos about the people on this channel saying all heretics and i just not gonna name names but there's a lot of them out there so it's just so funny that they claim to be filled with the holy spirit but do not exhibit the very basic fruits but yet 
they will say things like turn or burn if you are not fully repentant and sinless such as them but um i think that's basically what i want to say um if you guys want to read more about like the difference between like the gifts and salvation i think romans 11 uh particularly verse 29 does a pretty good job at explaining it 